Hey guys, hope you guys had a good week. So uh, if you didn't notice, this week was the rebalancing of the NASDAQ 100. So basically, I believe as far as I can tell, this is only the third time in history that it's happening happened. Um, basically for a short stint on what it is, uh, essentially what it means is that because tech has ran up so aggressively and mostly because they call them the Magnificent Seven, you know, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Tesla, Meta, NVIDIA. Um, because of those running up so aggressively this year, uh, basically the NASDAQ and even SPY are far too overbalanced with just those few. So basically what I read is that it, with just Apple, Microsoft, Google, and I believe Amazon, um, that those hold 45% of the weight of the NASDAQ. Um, and if you include like, um, Meta and Tesla, and I think they had uh, a NVIDIA in there and maybe one other. Uh, it's more like 55% of the NASDAQ. So to have, you know, over 50% of the weight being a handful of stocks is obviously not very smart. So they did a rebalance. Um, it was so it, it was kind of interesting because last Friday was supposed to be when they talked about the rebalance. Um, but then they said that the actual rebalance would take effect as of this Monday at market open. So basically, everybody had to sell their stocks to rebalance, essentially, and not be overweight. So most that's that's why tech got hit so hard this week, you know, especially the last three days. The queues got absolutely hit hard this week. So in my opinion, the fact that SPY... I mean, if you let's look, just look at this real quick here. Um, SPY dropped in the last three days a percent. Go over to the Qs. They have dropped. Oops, wrong button. They have dropped um, three point three percent. Now, still three point three percent really isn't that big of a drop, but it's still a drop. So my point is here is the fact that SPY held up so well despite all this sell-off tells me that this was just a rebalance and this is not an actual long-term drop coming. So I do believe this is a buy the dip. We also get FOMOC next Wednesday. It is pretty much a 100% odds of a 25 basis point hike on Wednesday. I would be shocked and the market would be shocked if anything but that happens. And honestly, because we've got CPI coming down this month, um, j is pretty much going to say, well, we have two, two more readings before the next FOMOC. We'll stay data dependent, which is going to be a whole nothing burger. And basically, it's just going to show the markets that nothing's going to change until September. I believe this next week is going to start probably a two month long rally in the markets. Uh, and then maybe, just maybe come September is when we'll have some trouble in the markets when FOMOC hits or if we get that CPI rebound in August and September. Looking at the daily here on SPY, we're in this short-term downtrend. That resistance sits at 452.8 for next week. Our major support realistically is 450.5. So interesting enough too is that SPY and the Qs took 450 and 380 together. The Qs clearly lost 380, but SPY has held 450. Shows a lot of strength. We remain over the daily AEMA. Uh, overall, we have closed exactly 0.00% today. You can see right here. I hate that I can't scroll over it because it just disappears, but 0.00%. Um, we have a really nice double bottom right here. I'm looking for a breakout next week, and I'm looking for us to get over this 454.3 supply that we put in a couple days ago, and then I'm realistically still looking for 460. Going to the weekly here, I don't have my supplies on here, but basically what we did is we put a supply in this week, but we closed in balance, in balance on the weekly. We closed over the supply we put in. Only two ways to fix that. First way is we lose the supply and close under it the next debt week. <clears throat> the second way is to immediately turn around, which is what we have been doing pretty much all for the last one, two, three, four, five, six weeks now. We turn around, immediately turn this into a demand and then push up. That is my expectations for next week is that we are going to continue to push up. 
I'm going to look to see 449.1 turned in to a new demand. And then we're going to try to breach finally this this February or sorry, January to March highs here of 453.5. Once we do that, I I mean I still believe strongly that maybe within the next three-ish month, we could be at all-time highs. I mean, if you scroll out here, I mean just just look at it. I mean, we're not that far from where we closed today to get back to all-time highs. I mean, six just under six percent. I mean, we are close. I, I would be shocked in the next three months, probably before the FOMO happens in September, if we're not somewhere in the 460 to 470 range, if not at all time highs. Going to futures, same thing here. So interesting enough on futures, we have a little bit of a different pattern. We did break through our bull channel that um, we had going right here. So we have kind of like a double bull channel going here. So we have a potential closer short term resistance with this as our support here. But then we have another outside one that actually gives quite a bit of breathing room to the upside. We have a resistance and supply um, that was that we did put in at 45.95. Uh, that was because of the drop today. So that takes out that supply that was just down there at 45.75. So we are balanced on the daily. We are still holding the AEMA. This 45.50 realistically with the AEMA here should be pretty strong support, and that should hold us up. Uh, I'm going to be looking for us to break back over realistically 45.84 to start our next move up. And then we start targeting the 4,600s and long term the 4,700s. Going to futures weekly here, same thing. We put in a new supply right there at 45.36. However, um, we are in balance because we close, we're going to close over it. So now the question becomes, are we going to turn into demand, which our last demand we have is right about 40, 44.38, or are we going to close back under it? So it's kind of interesting here for a while, we were pretty much putting a new um, demand in every 100 points or so, but now it's been more like every 50 points. So realistically, if we do our 50 to 100 points for a new demand, putting a demand in here at 45.36 area makes a lot of sense since our last one is right here at 44.38. So I'm looking for this to get turned into demand and then I'm looking for a pretty strong push up. I'm still looking for more mid 4600s to 4700s. Going over to the queues, obviously a ton more weakness, ton different looking chart here. We are in our bear trend right here. Back-to-back -back closes under the AEMA. Um, interesting enough, we are in our bear channel right here, but if you look at it, unless we pretty much open under, uh, and we could really probably even adjust this, probably for the more extreme side of things here. There we go. Um, on trading view, sometimes the candles just, they don't, they just pop it to the wrong little price tag there. You gotta be careful with different lines, but, if you see here, unless we pretty much open red on the queues on Monday, we are going to open over this channel or this channel resistance, and that's going to signal our upside. I mean, you can see it right here. This has happened numerous times. Move up, break down, move up, break down, move up, break down, move up. So I'm still looking for our ultimate target of the 390 plus area on the queues. Now going to the weekly here, same thing. We did put in a new weekly supply at 379.21. Now we are balanced in the fact that we closed below that. So if the bulls can immediately turn around and turn this in at here at 375.6 area into a new demand, then being that we took out our 382.9 and 384.8 demands, our upside, is all the way to the 400s. There is another supply I got, I got added to my chart because we just continue to tick up, up in this area, but we don't have any more demands up here. So if we establish a new demand, I mean, it's the same thing here. We're looking at a pretty pretty smooth sailing to all time highs. You take our close here um, of 375.6 and you look for all time highs, 8%. So interesting enough, mostly because the Qs took a pretty good hit this week, unlike SPY, we actually are seeing a little bit further distance to get to all-time highs on the Qs than we are on SPY. 
But realistically, until this extremely strong bull channel, I mean, look at this AEMA. This daily AEMA is just super supporting the whole way up. I mean, honestly, if you were to take a trend line, and we'll do it here just for fun, you take a trend line and you go up on our current trajectory. Now, let me make this a little easier for you guys to see. Now, take that same trend line and you look at pretty much, this is the COVID recovery. So this is right off of March. We are the same extreme le level of buying as we were buying the COVID dip in March. You go past that though, I mean, look at this. This is more extreme than November 20 through middle of February, 2021. And even if you go over here to pretty much 2021 through the top of, of 2022 here, I mean, this is an extreme move up. I mean, we are we are moving up. So that's something to keep in mind that really until this just absolute extreme momentum and this bull channel breaks, there is zero reason for anybody to be short. Yeah, you can play some overnight puts here and there. Um, but realistically, there's, there's just no reason to be short. Everything says we're going higher. Um, and until really a black swan hits the market, there's no reason to expect otherwise. So I mentioned on the VIX here that we did break out of our bull channel and I was looking for that to be our sign um, of upside. So you can see here, we kind of really are just in a little bit of a wider bear channel here. Um, we had put the new demand in at 13.3. So when we did that, I mentioned that our next target should be the 14s because we're gonna look to test the daily 20 EMA. You can see we came up yesterday, touched it hard rejected, and today because we closed back under the 8 EMA, we're also seeing 14.01 now become a new supply. So what I find super interesting, and it also fuels the the narrative that this was just the rebound thing and this is not uh, an actual like cor small correction come in or any sort of sustainable downside is the fact that the VIX did not move up with us. I mean, today, SPY closed flat um, 0% and Q's closed down 0.3%, but the VIX closed up or down, I mean, almost 3%. And even yesterday, we were barely up 2% and SPY had a pretty red day and the Q's had a very red day, one of the reddest days in the, of 2023. That tells me that there, there's no long-term put, put being put on there's not long-term hedges being put on. It was strictly selling of shares most likely, which means it was part of the rebalancing, which means we're gonna go back up. So I, I truly believe that this week or today, potentially, I think it's worth waiting till Monday to see what happens over the weekend with the rebalancing and the final rebalance parts and stuff. But I would be very surprised to not see a pretty much market-wide bounce on tech. So if you think about it, if let's say you have 100 shares of Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Tesla, all those big top ones, and they say, okay, you have to sell X amount to be able to rebalance, you're pretty much selling and you're going into cash. And now the rebalance happens and you have that cash, you're going to buy back in. So who's going to be the biggest winners of this rebalance, in my opinion, it is not the stocks that have already ran up. So it's not Apple, it's not Microsoft, it's not Nvidia, it's not Meta who are at all time highs. I think, and I said this probably a week or two ago now, um, Google, Amazon, Tesla, maybe AMD. I think those four are realistically the biggest opportunities for the second half of the year. Um, I think that Tesla easily could hit all-time highs. Um, Google has been held down for far too long, and I don't see a case where they don't hit 130s to 150s. Amazon, I'm just not a fan of Amazon. I mean, I use them all the time, but I'm not a fan of the things I hear from the business side of stuff and their PE with just their overall business lagging and competitors kind of coming in now with, I mean, Walmart Plus, um, this Tamu thing or whatever that is. Um, and just an overall decline in what I see from like customers and the, the business side of stuff. I don't think Amazon is a good buy myself. AMD, I do think is a good buy. I think 
I was surprised with all the AI stuff. And I know NVIDIA is kind of leading that charge uh, with the GPUs and stuff, but I'm really surprised to see AMD not up there with them. Um, but I do think those three, really Google, Tesla, and AMD, I think they have the strongest upside for 2023. Um, and I really would be surprised to not see all three of them it, at least make it halfway to their all-time highs, if not hit all-time highs. Last little thing we'll talk about here is Bitcoin. We are just stuck. We seem to be just barely moving our support line, which is now down to 29, um, exactly 29.8K. We just barely, you can see here, it's been slowly ticking down for the last two months now. Oh, month, month now. Um, there's just no movement. I mean, Bitcoin is just, it's just stuck in this area. All right, hope you guys have a good week. I'll see you guys next week.